I think the supplement industry gets a bad rap for two main reasons. The first is false marketing. The products often don't actually do what they're claimed to do. And the second is overpricing. Products are often way too expensive for what they actually offer. Luckily, creatine is a supplement that doesn't commit either of these shams. It's the most well-researched sports supplement with over 700 human studies investigating its safety and efficacy. And while it can be subject to false marketing, that's usually through the promotion of its variants like creatine HCL or creatine ethyl ester, which don't have nearly the same scientific backing as simple creatine monohydrate and often jack the price up unnecessarily. And plain old creatine is actually not expensive at all. In fact, in order to get the same dose from one teaspoon of creatine powder, you'd have to eat a kilogram of raw beef. So the price difference and the practical difference make supplementation a no-brainer. So creatine is a small tripeptide, meaning it's made up of three amino acids linked together. Our bodies can produce it naturally, and it's found naturally in foods, almost exclusively in uncooked meats. But even if you're eating a ton of meat, you're still not getting enough creatine to see its performance and physique enhancing effects because it's found in pretty low amounts and cooking denatures the creatine anyway. But before we can understand why creatine works, it's important to understand how it works. So first, a quick primer on ATP. The body has three main energy systems which work together to produce ATP the main energy currency used in the body. The aerobic system produces ATP slowly, using blood glucose and fat as fuel for long duration workouts, like distance running. The anaerobic system produces ATP more quickly, using blood glucose for intense bouts, lasting 30 seconds to two minutes, like say 50 meter freestyle swimming. And the phosphagen energy system produces ATP extremely quickly by using creatine phosphate stored in muscle. So when you need energy very quickly, such as when doing a fast all out sprint or a heavy set of bench press, your body relies on creatine phosphate as the quick source of ATP it needs. And according to an International Society of Sports Nutrition position stand, a normal diet containing one to two grams of creatine per day will have creatine stores only 60 to 80% saturated, while supplementation of creatine boosts creatine stores by 20 to 40%, meaning saturation is best achieved through supplementation. The fastest way to reach saturation is through creatine loading followed by a maintenance phase. So if you take 20 to 25 grams per day for a week, then you'll reach saturation levels within a week and start seeing the benefits right away. And then after the loading period, just five grams per day will be enough to maintain saturation from then on. On the other hand, you could just start with the five grams maintenance dose without any loading. However, it may take up to a month to reach saturation and to see the same results. So if taking creatine for the first time or after a long break, loading up makes most sense to me. One 2013 paper suggests that taking creatine post-workout increases fat-free mass and bench press strength better than taking it pre-workout out, but granted the differences were pretty small, the study hasn't been replicated, and a plethora of other studies have indicated that one can reach saturation levels just fine by taking creatine any time of day. One 2003 review looking at 300 studies cites a 5 to 15% increase in maximal strength and power with creatine supplementation. And a landmark paper from Volek and colleagues found that even in subjects with six years of training experience, creatine supplementation resulted in 30% more reps achieved across five sets with a moderate weight taken to failure. And considering the strong link between training volume and hypertrophy, being able to perform more work should translate to more muscle over time. Creatine does cause intramuscular water retention, but it isn't anything to be worried about since water is being held inside the muscle where you want it, not under the skin or anywhere else. And after all, intramuscular water does increase muscle fiber diameter, which could further increase muscle growth through cellular swelling mechanisms. It's worth mentioning that some folks don't appear to respond to creatine supplementation at all, with best estimates ranging from about 20 to 30% of people falling into this camp. Folks with high meat consumption and older trainees are more likely to be non-responders, but given the massive breadth of research showing a positive effect, its affordability, and vanishingly low risk of side effects, it's probably in your best interest to supplement anyway. There's no need to cycle off creatine, because unlike caffeine, your body won't develop a tolerance to its effects, and a 2003 study Study found that 21 consecutive months of supplementation led to no ill health effects. I also don't think we need to worry about combining creatine and caffeine together, although one 1996 paper did speculate the existence of some sort of inhibitory effect. This study only had nine subjects, meaning it was statistically
statistically underpowered, and since then three other studies have shown the exact opposite result, a synergistic effect of taking creatine and caffeine together. Whether or not creatine can contribute to male pattern baldness is a question that hasn't been directly investigated in the scientific literature. One 2009 study on rugby players found that taking 5 grams of creatine per day for two weeks increased DHT levels by 40%. However, weight training alone has been shown to increase DHT, and while DHT does seem to be a player in hair loss, this may only apply to men with a genetic predisposition or a family history of hair loss. So if you do happen to be in that camp, be more cautious with creatine, or consider stacking it with finasteride, which has been shown to reduce T to DHT conversion. In the end, I think the benefits far outweigh the costs when it comes to creatine supplementation, and I hope that in a supplement industry rich with overpromises and under-deliveries, creatine is one that lives up to the hype for you and your gains. Okay, what is going on everyone? Uh, so first, I just wanna say thank you for watching the video. I hope you guys really liked it. And before we go, I wanna give a huge shout out to Hims for sponsoring this video. Um, this is a sponsorship that I'm really excited about because uh, I think Hims is one of those few truly science-based companies out there and they're offering both prescription and non-prescription hair and sexual health products for men, uh, including finasteride, which is the hair loss treatment that I mentioned in the video. And in case you guys aren't aware, hair loss affects 66% of men by age 35 and over 25% of new ED cases are reported by men under the age of 40. So HIMSS is a place where you can get affordable quality medical recommendations and treatment from licensed medical doctors without the inconvenience or sometimes discomfort of having to go into an actual medical clinic for some of these issues. So Hims is offering a virtual visit with a licensed doctor and a month trial of their comprehensive hair kit uh, for viewers of this channel for just five bucks. Um, so if you go to forhims.com forward slash nippered or click the first link in the description box, you can get started with their complete hair kit today. And Hims takes your privacy very seriously, uh, so all interactions will be kept confidential. And they do offer medical grade solutions to these issues. Um, so their treatments are very well established within the medical community and all backed by quality scientific evidence. So thanks to Hims for sponsoring the video. Uh, thank you guys once again for watching. Um, if you are interested, make sure you check out that first link in the description box below. Uh, leave me a like if you enjoyed the video. Uh, please subscribe if you happen to be new, and I'll see you guys all here in the next video.